JJ, is it midnight? Not, not, not quite it. Not quite it. It's ten thirty. Ten thirty. Yeah. Ninety minutes before midnight. How was the APAC meeting? Uh, APAC meeting was good. I think yeah, there was a decent demo that happened. I think there's a. Uh, it's, it's getting bootstrapped, and it was it was good. I mean, like there was about uh, twelve nice. people showing up. Uh, there's enough number of people from different org showing up, so it's getting. Starting to form better. Um, Six Security International. That's awesome. Yep. You're like the global chair of Six Security. <laughs> global chair. <laughs> how, do, how did you come up with that name? Uh, most international chair most international chair yep it is uh, I like global though yeah. international chair yeah sort of sounds like a flight yeah. routine uh, some would say six security follows the sun but in reality just never sleeps and you're the proof of it yeah, it's a good group of people, though. I think it's uh, it's. Uh, I mean, I love you all here as well. But, uh, uh, it's a good group there, too. So, nice one. Uh, Okay, so now that uh, now that you're here, do we know who's? Let me exit out of this. No. Do we know who's running the meeting? Let me open up the agenda. You even show sign up on the list as, as global chair six security and then it's <laughs> changing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do we have? Oh, my, April 27th is uh, the other meeting. Okay, 28th, there's no meeting facilitator. Who's Who's signing up for meeting facilitation? Any takers? I might be on a low bandwidth, so uh, it gets choppy. Yeah, why don't you run with it and I'll, I'll fill in if needed. All right. May 4th, Cloud Native Security Day. Somebody should have an update on what's what's going on that captured the flag, which is the most exciting part of the whole thing. Well, the, the content in itself should be pretty exciting. If you look at the schedule, we have all sorts of talks ranging from confidential computing, 
kernel security with eBPF. There's a talk on WebAssembly modules. There are talks on identity and access. There's there's quite a bit that's packed in there. We have great keynotes from the event sponsors, Red Hat, VMware, Checkpoint. The, the CTF in itself, it's a lot going on. There's several scenarios. Uh, Magno uh, has worked closely with the control plane folks. Uh, Ron Vitter has participated. Uh, Magno and Diego are running the Twitch stream. They're gonna be providing live coverage of the event. There's a, there's a lot of guest speakers there. Magno, you wanna talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, uh, have we started the meeting officially yet? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so, um, so yeah, for the CTF, we're going to have at least, um, uh, at least six challenges for, um, different scenarios, right? In, in Kubernetes scenarios and, and everything. Usually the, the, the person doing the CTF, uh, each person gets, uh, their own cluster. Um, and, and usually they start inside a, of a cluster or on a node or, uh, in, in a network not next to a cluster. So there is all, all this like stories that we present to describe a scenario and what they need to do to get the flags. And so yeah, Control Plane, uh, uh, Andrew Martin and uh, Lu Lewis uh, are working on the challenges there. We, we help them with some suggestions for the challenges as well. So they're busy working on that. And uh, we're also going to have a live uh, live stream. So in, in two separate moments for one hour, we're going to bring some guest speakers uh, that are famous and, and are uh, well known in their field for Kubernetes and cloud native security. And, and gonna we're going to in, kind of interview them and ask questions about um, what, uh, what what are they uh, what they think about the specific challenge, right? Uh, of course, introduce them and present about their uh, their journey into cloud native security as well, and ask about some uh, tools that they use for uh, either either doing a CTF or or solving a, 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 an issue, instant handling or troubleshooting a Kubernetes cluster. So yeah, I think that's 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 it, and all kinds of fun stuff. Magno, do you have to be registered for Cloud Native Security Day to tune in and to the Twitch stream or not? I'm getting the question come up. Uh, technically, no. So for the Twitch stream, it's open to anyone, even even the CTF, if you, if you will, right? So because we're not kind of tracking uh, who's joining. Uh, so we're going to have a Slack channel there on, on the, the cloud, native, cloud native Slack and everyone uh, a specific Slack channel for the CTF. So we're going to have uh, someone responsible for uh, Taskmaster. So this person is going to be Louis and, and he's going to be handling uh, the deployment of the clusters and giving uh, each participant their uh, credentials to access each cluster, right? Um, and on, on the Twitch stream, all you have to do is uh, follow the, the Cloud Native uh, Computer Foundation Twitch stream. I, I can put the link on the chat uh, after that. And, and because if you wanna interact and, and ch chat and ask questions also that we're going to get some questions from the, from the audience, from, from the chat. Uh, so you need to follow that beforehand because it takes, uh, there's like, a, 15 minutes delay before you can start uh, interacting with the chat. So if you can follow that earlier before, even before the event, so that's better. Um, so let me get that, uh, let me get that link for you. Uh, any, any questions? Hey Magno, this sounds exciting. Do you have the list of speakers for the Twitch stream already lined up or are you gonna post this somewhere? Uh, we have the list. We just sent them the, some details today. Uh -huh. uh, I'm not sure if we're going to post it. Uh, I think there is some details on the schedule, but there, there's, I, I don't think we have the names of the speakers there. Uh, but I can give it to you here if you want. We have, we have one of them in attendance right now. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, Rory. Rory McCune is joining us. Yeah. Yep. Over there. Awesome. Yeah. So so just just a quick uh, overview here of the the speakers, the guest speakers. So I'm going to be running the, the Twitch stream together with Diego and Ron. Um, and also there is a friend of mine that's going to be helping with the, like just just with the, the stream uh, administration, right? Okay, who, who's gonna be on screen and share and stuff like that. Um, also, so we have Rory McCune and David McKay from uh, on the, the first uh, schedule from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, Central Europe time, I think, that's CET. Uh, and then on the next session uh, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. on the same time zone, we have, uh, we're going to have Brad Giesemann, Tabitha Sable, and Lise Rice. So those are the names of the guest speakers. Any other questions? Let me get the Twitch uh, the Twitch profile from Cloud Native Foundation here and I'll add to the chat. So the first session is the one where people might need translations from Glaswegian, because both David and myself are from West Scotland. <laughs> we start yeah. lapsing too much into that, just kind of pull us back. <laughs> no problem, don't worry. I know you will you be doing the captions for those guys? Yeah, we can get like some <laughs> subtitles. That would be a good idea, probably. <laughs> uh, I have a, I have a yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is Sen. Um I have a quick question regarding the CTF. Uh, is mm -hmm. there like a so when you jump into the CTF, do you have like uh, topics for each CTF? For example, like namespace or, or, or secrets or, or, you know, like cert or um, like a bunch of data stuff, like for example, getting the data from ETCD or, mm -hmm. or like, do you have like, you know, you, do you divide the CTF into different topics or? So yeah, we, we divide them on scenarios. It's not exactly like that, namespaces and certs, but we have each, each, each uh, a challenge is a different thing that you need to do, right? So it's a different scenario. So when when you uh, when you get your credentials and you access the, the cluster, for example, you're gonna see a description there uh, of, of like, okay, it's kind of a story, right? Oh, someone compromised at this cluster and, and, and did this, this and that, and you need to find the flag, right? So there is a description there on the scenario that you can read and, and understand what you need to do, right? And, and so that's that's exactly uh, why we're going to have the guest speakers uh, as well on, on the Twitch stream, because uh, uh, they don't know about the challenges, right? So we're, we're not providing any any details about the challenge uh, beforehand to them. And we, we just want to like kind of pick their brains and, and, and get uh, some information about, uh, according to their experience, what they would, look for first right where where they would go to to find those flags right i'm very excited <clears throat> about that I, I hope i can get the link and register <laughs> sure no problem yeah we're, we're going to open the slack channel on uh i think on tuesday and, and yeah during the whole uh cloud native security day you can join and, and take up some challenges and, and try it out and and it's it's a, a learning experience right we, we don't we're not gonna uh, be scoring anyone. So if you have uh, any questions, you can ask on Slack there as well. So people will be able to help you. Hey, awesome. So hey, Magno, do you have Sounds a great. link to the Slack channel by any chance? Because this is the last meeting before Six Security Day. So how do folks know what channel to log into? Are you going to post it on the Six Security Slack itself? We'll put it on Six Security. Okay. Yeah, we're putting it on Six Security. And I think on the start of the Cloud Native Security Day, we're also going to have a few minutes to, to talk about the CTF and we can mention that as well. Perfect, okay. I would, okay. Yeah, I would we, have a, we have a dedicated session on the agenda to, to talk about the, the CTF and go over logistics and details. So stay tuned for that. Magno or uh, Andres, I think, uh, just put a summary together and send it out to the um, email list that we have 
Okay, uh, I can do that. Keep it, keep it active. Yeah. So, okay. Leverage. Yeah, there's a lot more people on the email list than the ones that are on this call. So, it'll be sure. a good, good one to. I will say if you're registered <clears throat> for the event, you'll be getting all the details and we want you to be there. The, the one thing now that we're pretty much locked and loaded, sorry, that, that's perhaps a harmful expression. Now that the event is in full swing and we have all the preparations in place, I, I want to recognize that while, while, while we often meet at a weekly cadence and we talk about the different things that we're working on, this event, this collocated event is really a culmination of what we've done for the last year, like more so the last six months, but it is produced by us. It is produced by us who gather here every week for six security and it captures a lot of our efforts, or a lot of our ideas, even though you might've not been directly part of the program committee, it does channel all of our discussions and all the things we we have back on the meeting notes. So it is it is a little a little party of six security of showcasing all our work to, to the rest of the world. So I just want to recognize everyone who was part of this effort and yeah, pat yourself on the back because it is quite a bit and it will show the day off. But yeah, good stuff. Awesome. Nice work, yeah, nice it, work. Yeah, if I may take the opportunity here, I have one update as well besides that. So uh, on, on a side note, uh, me and uh, Diego Comas, which will also be on the, the Twitch stream uh, for the CTF, we've been work, working on, on, on kind of a um, cloud native security podcast. And that has been going for a couple, I think, months now. Uh, we're working on, on recording some episodes and uh, we finally released the first episode today. Uh, it's kind of just an introduction episode about the, how the podcast is going to work. Uh, basically, we're going to have some guest speakers as well uh, to talk about cloud native security and, and different topics. And uh, besides the guest interviews, we're also going to have some uh, demos. So uh, yeah, no vendor pitches, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, this is all, all, all free and all, everything open. So we're going to have some uh, demos of how, like how can I install a cluster, uh, unmanaged cluster, right? How can I install a cluster on EKS? And then uh, security as well, like follow the best practices. Uh, so we're doing that and uh, tomorrow we're releasing the first official episode actually. So tomorrow is also the release of the MITRE attack uh, updates and, and the official release of the MITRE attack for containers and Kubernetes. So we're going to have a, a dedicated episode about that uh, tomorrow. But is this yeah, just the, audio or is it video? What, what are you doing? Are you doing a Twitch chat thing? Or? Uh, so it's audio and video and we're doing on, on YouTube. So we're not doing live. We're, we're recording that uh, prior, yeah. I'll talk with you after this if I could. I know I got some okay. ideas for you. Awesome, right. sounds good, thank you. So yeah, that's it for me, thank you. Back to our global chair, JJ. All right, sounds good, I'll take it. And now, uh, yeah, uh, regular, logistics please enter your attendance and if you have any updates please put it there so we can call out as we go through uh, we have one scribe ash uh, any volunteers for a second scribe please take it um, all right so no go no takers for second scribe um, Yeah, Magno gave gave his update. Who else has an update? Uh, so just a quick update on the cloud native security map. So the first iteration of the map is live. I'm posting a link in the chat. Uh, we still need a bunch of contributions for various sections. So if you all are interested, check it out. And there's a contribute link at the bottom. So if you 
think you have expertise in a particular section, please do uh, send out a PR and reach out to uh, us, like Brandon, Mac, uh, Brandon, Diego. Um, thanks. Awesome, awesome. Robert, you have updates on uh, issue 603? Uh, yes, well, uh, mostly just to brief everyone here about 603. So Cluster API uh, asked for a security audit to the Kubernetes SIG security uh, group. Uh, I'm actually participating on the Kubernetes audit uh, team as well. And that RFP had been closed uh, prior to the Cluster API folks asking, uh, or maybe it happened in parallel, but somehow the wires didn't connect. Um, so we couldn't scope them in for the, the paid audit. Um, so the discussion in the, in the Kube SIG security was to, to review the cluster API, could we find more money to do it? Or we, could we do a community review or audit or, or some combination of that or something else? Um, I think Pushka, uh, I, I don't know his first name, <laughs> just the GitHub handle, Pushkar J. Uh, I think it reached out to Emily and the feedback was um, that the, the security PAL process we have, what we used to call assessments, what we're calling reviews, really for sandbox and incubation. So there's never been a case of a graduated project or a sub project of a graduated project coming for a review here. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, PJ suggested we kind of use this as a pilot case study, if you will. How, how do we do this? Um, I'm happy to lead that. Uh, I put myself on the, the ticket. I think we can use most of the security review, security pal materials, and we'll call out tweaks and suggestions. That said, the, the scope should be different. This isn't, in, in, I mean, this is my opinion, but feel free to, to vet this with other folks on the cluster API team. Um, I, I think they want more of a, traditional audit assessment, you know, even maybe at a pen test level. So I, I think we will quickly go beyond the security panel security review scope and use that as kind of a, a first step and then dig deep into the audit side. Um, and then if money appears, um, we'll probably do use, a, use that to cross check the work that we do. Um, but that's the plan, no, nothing is actually, other than the, the GitHub issue, 603, nothing has actually started yet. Nice. So awesome. that's, that's my report. Uh, questions, suggestions, concerns? So do we, uh, is it in a position where you know you're gonna do it and we need more volunteers and ask for help? or uh, is it still an exploration phase i would say like yeah that's that is a question i guess it's it's kind of again if i if i follow the the flow chart <laughs> uh mm -hmm. emily is saying the security pal process isn't appropriate mm -hmm. um pj is asking can we pilot something else so we're kind of at that decision tree like do we do we say yes? Do we say no? If if those you know if the SIG itself here doesn't want to officially kind of undertake it, we could kick it back to the Kubernetes SIG, and those who are interested could volunteer. If we want to officially kind of embrace this as a pilot for a graduated or or, or graduated sub project uh, edge case then yes, then I think we, you know, officially uh, comment on the PR, say that the CNCF SIG is taking it on and then ask for volunteers. But I think we're at that decision point. I see. So uh, just for my own education, uh, was this an ask from the Kubernetes SIG or uh, is this something that- It was an ask from the cluster API group to the Kubernetes SIG. Ah. And it. then it became more of an ask from PJ um to us here at this city got it got it got it okay um so and and again point emily's point of order i think would be um you know the usual the process we're trying to do with the security review security powers should be more toc driven 
So again, this is a bit of an edge case or an exception. So no, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting thing to think through. Um, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of roadmap items that we have on the group to uh, tease out and uh, get that going. Uh, say, for example, landscape and a uh, few other white white paper derivatives that I, that exist that uh, needs a, needs some closure. And in addition, we also have assessments. Um, uh, it'll be good to understand. When we set this as a, what is it going to be setting the setting as a precedence when we do this, and how scalable it is going to be in terms of taking up? So, is it going to be for every API that gets introduced in like every other project? That's a very good question. Yeah, so, one, one could argue that if we do accept it, then then as precedent, yeah, then theoretically, all APIs could come knocking. So maybe that's a good thing, or maybe that's uh, overwhelming. So we want to kick it back. Good, good yeah. point. Yeah. So I would push it back for uh, discussion with, uh, uh, at least with the uh, TLs and chairs, because so far it's always been like TOC driven, uh, just like what Emily said. Uh, and it was basically around uh, projects as the granularity with which we've actually done stuff and it has, there was clear goals in terms of like how we, what that really means for the process uh, within incubation or within sandbox and within uh, graduation. But uh, but this one will be uh, a bit different from what we've been traditionally doing. So uh, yeah, I would. Uh, one yeah. idea is maybe we just, I mean, again, I think a lot of the materials that we've developed are very useful, but that could just be a fork, right? So, you know, SIG cube, SIG security could fork the materials and, and then run with it. We can do that. And uh, we can always invite them for a readout of like what the report is and uh, have a session. Uh, that is something that I think it'll be useful for the group to understand what's going on there. Uh, and it's an important enough initiative that I think it'll be worthwhile uh, for the group to understand the landscape. Uh, it might impact a bunch of other projects that actually depend on Kubernetes or built on top of Kubernetes security or Kubernetes framework in EV. Right? So, uh, so I'd explore that I'd probably uh, think through in terms of the long-term consequence and what it sets up as precedence and then think about the scalability of the group uh, and uh, get back to six, uh, six Kubernetes SIG to basically uh, figure out what their goal and objective or what could they get out of this and then see if we can actually have it uh, with them to do it would be the preference given the bandwidth constraints that we'll be having. So if we take this up. Yeah, I think that sounds fair. Um, I think that's a good, uh, a good model because I, the point of, you know, are we then going to take on every API group and every Kubernetes as a, as a review project uh, probably would overload the, the capacity. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then so I'll just roll into the other uh, update I had. Uh, so the policy work group, which just a kind of a point of order, we started off as the CNCF policy work group, um, both of the, uh, of which I was originally uh, co-chair, but the two original founders have, no, have kind of dropped off and gone dead. And then we had a, a new uh, co-chair but we're rehoming that to the Kubernetes. So actually our repo is under the, the Kubernetes uh, repo structure. So technically, I guess we should be calling ourselves the Kubernetes policy work group. <laughs> but, you know, anyway, so there's some, there's some disentanglement that needs to happen since we're, we're technically still pointers from the CNCF policy work group. But anyway, it's, it's one big happy family. 
So just FYI, we are working on a drill down white paper. So this is, I put a link here. This is a policy uh, specific white paper and in particular Kubernetes policy. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it has some cross cutting concerns. You know, how do you implement policy? How do you measure policy? How do you, how does policy map to compliance and regulation? So um, not CNCF policy, not multi-project policy, very Kubernetes oriented. And in particular, the, the work group has kind of narrowed its uh, work product to a Kubernetes CRD for policy reporting. And, and down the road, we'll have other CRDs for policy, uh, various ingestion, execution, what whatnot. But right now the policy report is kind of just a standard resource for any sort of tool that wants to represent their findings in Kubernetes as a resource. So then you can use, you know, downstream tooling to aggregate all that data. But uh, if anyone's interested in contributing or just reviewing or keeping track of progress, the outline is very much work in progress draft. We've had a couple of working sessions, um, but it's out there. Feel free to comment, add to it, comment, anything you need. Yeah, I mean, historically, I don't know how much you know about the history of policy working group. Was it Howard and Erica? Yeah, it was I Howard thought. and Erica who were the original. Yeah, so uh, uh, precisely for this reason, uh, we, uh, and there was a huge overlap between six security and policy working group. So I don't know how much you know. Uh, policy working group was integrated into six security uh, with a PR which was pending on Harvard for a while. Uh, and uh, the objective was to like unify this so that you can have, uh, you can still have multiple streams under six security, but then uh, uh, policy will be part of this because it, uh, one of the things that it's very important for specifically for policy uh, because it is a cross cutting concern uh, not just for Kubernetes and it will be applicable for multiple other uh, infrastructure projects as well. Uh, that are part of uh, ENCF umbrella. So if it feels like it's a general purpose thing that needs a cover uh, across multiple projects, I think it's good to unify because then what you'll see is multiple policy working groups and multiple different projects getting spin off. Uh, and then you'd have to worry about unification of that. So uh, I would tread that uh, carefully. If you want, I can pull up the issue and then we'll share. Uh, maybe we can take this uh, to Slack and discuss about uh, how we want to proceed with this. Uh, I'm with you, the... JJ. Um, I feel you can't do policy in isolation, right? Um, and there are layers of policy, policies, right? Um, especially when service mesh comes into picture and so on and so forth. So the whole integration, just doing Kubernetes policy um, and not leaving out security policy doesn't make sense. So, so the table of contents we reviewed this morning um, does have a lot of security content in, as well, in it as well. Um, and one of the action items I got from the group was that next week, I will review the agenda with this forum. So if there's any feedback, we should update it. But long-term, I think it makes sense to combine that group as part of this because the participation um, is from people who are um, policy people, but also security people there as well. So I think good value and good um, overview from different point of views from different participants here as well are needed on that. Yeah. That's I mean, it is great that Robert's taken a lead on this, then at least there's some person to uh, shepherd and uh, take ownership and drive it in the right direction. Um, there's an overarching security framework. I think that's a thing that, you know, that I think should be driven by what, um, what the team's doing here, right? So what Robert's doing out, out here, because I think in terms of subject matter experts, I don't think there's anybody better than this group, right? So that's mm -hmm. kind of, my unsolicited opinion here. I agree with you, Dan, 100%. Yeah. So, uh, so I'll take, I'll probably take uh, Robert's lead on this as 
has been starting that. So, Robert, if it's okay, if maybe we can chime in on an existing thread that. Uh, that yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah. Happy to. I, just yeah. just a, a factual piece of data is the, the from an organizational perspective, it has forked <laughs> so that the repo is now under the um, custodianship of the Kubernetes uh, mm -hmm. structure. And so, you know, like you know, you're literally at a GitHub, you know, PR level, permissions level. So not to say that all these human policy, uh, I'm not going to use the word policy, human organizational factors can't be reworked and unwound and rewound and all these things. But uh, from a tactical perspective, it, it has already forked. Um, and, and so the group has kind of gone down this Kubernetes path. But that's not to say that we can't remerge into the master. <laughs> so ha happy to do that. Happy to have that conversation. And uh, I, this is, uh, I think, yeah, Slack. We can do a, a spin out uh, Slack for anyone who's interested. Um, yeah. 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 Let's take a lead on that. And I, uh, I chime in on that thread. Uh, if you can create a Slack and we'll pull up the existing issue. So we can start discussing there. Perfect. We'll do. Uh, but this awesome. Thanks, Robert. Aradhana, I think you had some updates. Um, so JJ, I already provided my update, right? It was about the policy working group okay. and the right. also there is another Kubernetes. Uh, security group that is also working on a policy paper. So Emily gave me the action to coordinate a meeting between the three leads, right? And okay. figure out what these papers are about so we don't have overlap and we can coordinate the efforts. Um, also next week, I will bring that paper that Robert was just mentioning, the white paper and the table of contents. So we can mm -hmm. review it and we can provide some feedback while we are in parallel working to uh, consolidate these groups. Perfect, okay. that makes okay. sense. Share. Awesome. So, no one else has Andrew Martin. Andrew, uh, Andrew has seen sick. sick yes, indeed. Uh, apologies for some radio silence over the past uh, few weeks. It turns out that the fourth of May is a lightning rod for various uh, deadlines and deliverables. But the CTF is coming on leaps and bounds. Um, we're mostly there with all the scenarios. Um, I, we're very excited, suffice to say. Um, as I'm sure everyone knows, there's um, uh, a lot of people lined up on Twitch to, uh, to contribute. And thank you to everybody who contributed scenarios as well. They were incredibly useful. Um, so yes, full steam ahead, all is well. And uh, I look forward to the day after the 4th of May. Awesome. Any questions on that? Any comments to add from anyone? You know, Magno talked about that. Andy, are, are you saying that if anyone decides to run through the CTF on their own on May 5th, you're not going to be there to support them? They're on their own? <laughs> Um, to some extent, I, I don't know where I'll be. I'll, I'll probably be trying to watch as much KubeCon from as reclined the posture as possible. Being, being global, it might be fifth for me, but uh... that's Andres' game plan. Every KubeCon is watching it from a reclining place and drinking a beer. I think, right? Am I am I adding you there, buddy? Yeah. No, Andres. <laughs> Uh, I, I can't disclose everything I do. <laughs> so you're in security, of course. Of course not. And I, I suppose it's an appropriate time to say that um, I, I do miss the the meetups. So that the next uh, the next KubeCon we have in person, I guess we'll do a security meetup then as well. With any luck, hundred percent. Yeah, it used to be fun. It'll be a big uh, banger. I'm gonna drink a lot. Of, I'm sorry. We're gonna say hello to everybody. <laughs> Nothing, you know, non-alcoholic completely. <laughs> Andy, do you have any sessions at KubeCon? Or not this time around? Uh, 
No, not this time around, actually. Just, uh, just pure, pure day zero. Pure day zero. You're writing a book or you're dictating a book. Uh, yes, that's also going on. Um, th that's actually, uh, the, the book is Hacking Kubernetes with um, the venerable Mr. Michael Hassenblas as well. The uh -huh. manuscript deadline is the Friday. Oh, it, it's a week from Friday. So that's what one of the many things that have conspired against me. But I, I'm on top of everything. Everything's good. It's just, uh, yeah, and it's it's in early access. But um, I mean, if people feel inclined to to review, do please reach out. And there's uh, there's some words there as well. That's early access through O'Reilly. Yeah, it, it's up. The first two chapters are not actually indicative of what we've um, what we've done at this point, but. Uh, yeah, if people have spare cycles, and I realize that um, with all the all the work people do contributing to all the community projects, um, it, it is a it is a big ask. So there's no expectation, but uh, you're welcome to a copy of the, the early manuscript if um, people would like to review. Awesome. Uh, all right. Who else has got any update? Who am I missing? Ash had no update. Uh, Ash, if in the discussion around unification of policy, I think it'll be useful for you. I don't know, see if it makes sense for you to chime in or be part of, I would. Yeah, sure to help Aradna on this. Happy to help Aradna on this one. Perfect, perfect, okay. Awesome. Um, I don't see anyone else having any other updates. There wasn't anything else on the agenda for today. Um, I don't know that there's anyone new. I, I seem to recognize all names in attendance. Uh, maybe only Steve's cat. I haven't seen you before. What brings uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm new. Um, so yeah, I'm Steve. I'm based in the UK. Uh, I'm the CTO of a uh, paytech startup. Uh, now approaching about 200 people, uh, half of which are engineers. And out of that, we've got about 10 dedicated security team. Um, so we have most of our platform AWS. We're starting to use Kubernetes. Um, so I thought I would join the group. Um, probably I will try and drag some of my security engineers along uh, rather than me, because I think this content is probably more relevant for them. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd, I'd turn up and just listen. Thanks. Awesome. Anyone awesome. else? Yeah. All right, if there's no new people, no updates, we can give 15 minutes back. Oh, next no. week there's no meeting. Uh, just... Yeah. Yeah, next. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, since it's, Kube, since it's KubeCon next week, there won't be a meeting next week. So the one will be on May 12th. Correct. May 5th meeting or May 4th, I don't know. Uh, May 5th meeting is canceled because of KubeCon. Uh, and uh, the agenda for the May 12th meeting, as it says, is on uh, triage team. So it's going to be more triage um, there's no meeting facilitator if anyone else anyone wants to sign up for facilitating that please do um, I'll take it if anybody needs twice I'll sign up for them sorry for the processor perfect awesome uh, if there's not much then we can call it wraps thanks you all have a good one see you in a couple of weeks bye, bye. Bye, Good, Good evening.